children, there were three of us, we were never introduced to the entertainment world as such. We spent most of our time in church. Uh, I played the organ, I played the piano, sang in the choir, taught Sunday school. So did my sister, Emily. My brother, of course, was able to sneak out and play marbles in the street. <laughs> I am a firm believer in divine guidance. And consequently, I don't think it's something I chose to do, but that I was chosen to do. I was simply walking along the street one day and someone stopped me and asked me whether or not I was a model. And I wasn't. I was working as a secretary at the time. And he said, if you aren't, you should be. And I said, how do you do that? Well, you register at a school and you get a certificate and then you make the rounds of the various uh, modeling agencies and someone will sign you. And it was while I was out one day on a modeling interview with the editor today. Her name was Mildred Smith. And as I left, there was a woman sitting in the outer office whose name was Evelyn Davis. And she went into uh, Miss Smith and she said to her, she looks right for a role in a movie that I just interviewed for. And then she gave me a call and she said, listen, I have an interview schedule for you this afternoon. It's for a movie. I said to her, I don't know anything about movies. Thank you very much, but I'm not going to go there and make a fool of myself. <laughs> and um, she kept calling me. And I finally said to her, please don't call me anymore. You're going to make me lose my job. And I hung up the phone. She called me back and she said, just tell me you go over and see this man. He just wants to see you. I said, OK. His name was Warren Coleman, and he was a former actor who was very unhappy with the way his career had gone, simply because he was a black man and I wanted to form a company to do films for black consumption, mainly. And um, he said, would you like to be an actress? I said, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. But I suppose that instinctively, I did the right things. And I truly believe that that was a revelation to me of what talent really is. Talent to me is a thing that allows you to function correctly in a given set of circumstances. You just happen to do the right thing. And he said, the job is yours. That was the beginning of my career. That's how it actually started. My mother, who told me that I couldn't live in her house and do that, whatever that was, when I told her I was going to be an actress. And um, I said, OK. I had a girlfriend who had a job working for the telephone company. And she wore the same dress size that I wore. And so when I had to have an interview, I'd borrow one of her dresses and I went to live with her in her apartment. I started with Strasbourg, and I was very concerned about being there because all of the big stars already established, Marilyn Monroe and people like that. And I, I looked up one day and there she was sitting next to me and I said, I don't belong here. 
so I stopped going. They called me and asked me why I was not attending classes, and I said, because you put me with a group of professionals. I'm not a professional, I'm a beginner, and I like learning things from the ground up. Okay, come back. I went back, they put me in a beginner's class, and I was very comfortable there because I was beginning to understand what this acting thing was all about. I got word that there was a teacher who taught at a performing arts, and she was about to launch her directorial uh, career. And she chose a piece entitled Dark of the Moon. And she was looking for a young woman to play the lead. Her studio was on the fourth floor of a walk-up. I was so terrified, I was so scared <laughs> that I started screaming her name <laughs> from the time I entered the building all the way up the Oh, excuse me, all the way up the steps until I landed on her floor and she was standing at her door trying to figure out who this maniac was that was screaming her name all the way up the floor. And she said, are you Miss Tyson? I said, I shook my head, yes. What's the matter? I'm scared. <laughs> she, said to her, she said, come on in. And she spoke with a very deep voice. And that even frightened me more, right? So I read the character and she read the male lead. And when I was finished, she said, would you like to try this? And I said, yes. But that particular play was chosen to appear in an annual event and they chose a scene from Dark of the Moon to appear on Broadway in Talent 59. And that particular event brought out all of the producers and directors and casting agents who were looking for new talent and we were fortunate enough to be chosen. And from that, I began to get calls from agents, from people who were producing plays, movies. My favorite stage memory. I was rehearsing a play, Jean Genet's The Blacks off-Broadway, a huge success. And it is the play I, I maintain that started avant-garde theater in this country. That show ran for three years, and I tell you, it was a lesson. I was doing a show with Roscoe Lee Brown in Summer Stock, and we got the call to come and do The Blacks in California. So we went on to complete the show that we, we were doing. And after the show, we went out and had a bite to eat. And he said, well, what do you think? I said, what I would like to do is I would like to play her absolutely bald. When the evening came for the performance and Ivan Dixon, who was the director, said, play this, please, I... I took the scarf off in my dressing room and I came down the steps. My Angelou played the White Queen and she's very tall. She was very tall. And she turned around, she looked up at me and all the heads turned just automatically, one right after the other. Nobody said anything. Someone said, call Ivan. 
Ivan came running backstage. He took one look at me and he said, well, ladies, you have your work cut out for you tonight. And we went on with the show. It was a very important step in my life. When we got the reviews and we knew it was a huge success, I said, well, I don't think I could do a show for, for more than three months. I'll stay for three months and then I'll leave and go do something else. Well, it lasted for three years. And during that three year period, I did about three different shows. I went off, did another show, came back. Went off, did another show, came back. And so did everyone. It was like a home base. I was born on the south side of Chicago. I was born black and a female. I was born in a depression after one world war and I came into my adolescence during another. And while I was still in my teens, the first atom bombs were dropped on human beings. I have been personally the victim of physical attack, which was the offspring of racial and political hysteria. I think it's presumptuous of me to say that the work that I have done has had some impact. And I frequently never find that I am anywhere near the character until I feel that I have fitted into her skin. And that allows me to, to move with her, physically, mentally, spiritually, and otherwise. Ah, uh, when I get to that point, I can begin to talk because then I know why she says certain things the way she says it. I did a tour across the country when I was promoting Sounder, the first movie that I, major movie that I did. In LA, when I was being interviewed by a young woman, from a major newspaper. And uh, she told me that she did not believe the love scene that took place in Sounder between Nathan and Rebecca. Those were the characters' names. I, I, I was a little taken aback because I didn't quite understand what she was getting at. And I said, what do you mean? So she simply said that she did not think that black people made love or had a, a oh, I don't know where she was going with it. And uh, I said to her, do you realize what you're saying? You're saying that we are not human beings. And she said, well, you know, I don't know them. She's talking to me, a black woman. I don't know them. I don't go to school. I never went to school with them. I never lived with them in their neighborhoods. I, so I don't know them. I don't know anything about them. I said, you're living during the civil rights era where people, human beings, are being hosed down and chased by dogs and shot and killed, okay, and jailed. And you don't know anything? about us, your guilt lies in your innocence, as far as I'm concerned. And that was it. It was those kinds of things that made me realize that I could not afford the luxury of just being an actress. I realized that there were a number of issues that had to address, that I had to address that I was not one to wave a placard or march up and down the street and yell and scream. I had to find a way to address them. And I chose my career as my platform. I may be poor, I may be poor. but I am. 
somebody. I may be on welfare, but I am somebody. I may be in jail, but I am somebody. I had made a promise to myself that I would never do anything to degrade myself as a woman and as a black woman. That was my commitment. And so I choose things that will educate people to the fact that we are human beings. The color of our skin does not determine who we are. We are born into this universe just like any other race of people. And, and as a result, should be treated just by the mere virtue of being a human being as a human being. You know, when I cut my hair off, I got stacks of mail in bushel bags condemning me from blacks and whites because we were so embarrassed about the texture of our hair. And today, hey, you wear it wherever, however you want it. And that was my point. Today, it's no longer an issue. You know, women feel uh, they, they can wear their hair as, as high as the sky if they wanted to, or cut it off and go bald. That's your choice. That's your personal choice, All right? The color of our skin is no longer an issue in some places. I don't know what's going to happen in the future, but right now, it is not. Uh, we're prouder than ever of who we are, what we are, and why we are. And that's as it should be. We're honored tonight that Miss Cicely Tyson has come home to Broadway. <laughs> You're a native New Yorker. Bred and born. You, which explains all that energy. So I have a pet theory about that. I think that New York theater has always been a source of energy both to actors and to the theatrical scene nationally. That's how all of us feel who began our careers here in New York. And for some of us, most of us, I suspect, there were many years of knocking on doors, pounding pavements, studying, learning, rehearsing, years of working hard at a craft that we all love. But I lived to hear my mother say one day, I am so proud of you. Before she passed, I think if I if she had not said that to me, it would none of it would mean anything. I think she was my source of energy that drove me throughout my career because I was determined to prove her wrong. Your son and your daughter-in-law came in just after oh, you left. Oh, I know. I saw them coming. That's why I left so fast. <laughs> what is it all about? I'm still trying to find out. I still study. I'm still searching. I think that once you ever get to the point, once one ever gets to the point where they really feel that they know it, they're lost because that allows you to stop searching, to stop trying to get to the essence of what a role or a person really is. I think that if you continue to search, then you will always find a deeper meaning. Oprah has a way of saying, what do you, 
what are you sure that you know? And my answer to that is that I am sure that I know nothing. And I find that out every day. <laughs> 